All right, I've been working on a little bit of a project for someone else, and they sent me a piece and um, something I don't have myself. So I figured I would take an opportunity before I ship that piece back to kind of review a little bit about some of my knowledge and of the evolution and differences in the different variations of the SK2000 helmet. So I'll flip my camera around and point out a few things. I lost my good tripod motor for my iPhone, so I hope this works out well since I can't see what I'm, what I'm doing here. Um, so the piece that I've been working on uh, is a Winwell, and this is the predecessor, I'm sorry, uh, RD1979-2000, Winwell 2000. Um, anyway, this is the predecessor to the Cooper SK2000, and there are some differences. So I've, I've kind of put out an array of different variations of the helmet that I own, so we can talk a little bit about them. Um, the, the Windwell itself, I don't have the padding for this, but the padding was quite a bit different, and it used a different backing material than the like cardboard-type material that the Cooper uses. But if, there are a few key things um, when you move, uh, let, let's start with the fact that the, uh, the bumpers for the Windwell, these are the originals and these were cracked. I've, I've welded these um, to repair them, but they were cracked all the way through in half. Uh, inside doesn't look all that pretty. Outside, it really just looks like a scratch left behind, but the uh, owner of this is going to do a kind of a full... Uh, showroom style refurb on this. It won't be used for gameplay, it's for uh, display use. But on the inside, so this is the original style bumper. It's, uh, it's a thicker plastic than the current or the later versions of the Cooper. Um, and it, it has these platform areas as the spacers. So it's a thinner profile on this edge here and it just has these circular areas and then when you get to the first version of the Cooper I think it's interesting I haven't measured it but I'm, I'm fairly certain that this area of the plastic is thicker than on the Windwell <clears throat> as well as instead of the three disc platform area Cooper went with this offset ring and you know, uh, kind of a nipple assembly here as the spacer so that as you compress the screw and it flexes the plastic, um, it'll stop the plastic from cracking in half very easily. And so that's, that's the first evolution in the bumpers. Uh, slightly different shape with the notched corner on the Coopers versus the Windwells, but relatively the same concept. Um, and I'm going to set those aside because we'll talk about those again in a little bit here. But we'll go, we'll go right to the front half of the shell. And so this, this is a first version of the Cooper. Um, this one has a manufacturer date of 1982, I believe December of 82. And... Um, so it's, it's similar to what Winwell had, but Winwell had these actually really cool vent holes over here in the corners that the Coopers didn't have. A little bit different shape on the front vents. They're wider. Uh, the sideburn has this ridge where the Cooper doesn't, um, and the Cooper has uh, holes for J-hooks where there was not on the win well. I uh, believe the slot here is related to attaching the padding um, instead of a screw or it was on in, um, in addition to the screw. Uh, both of them have this little ridge inside of these top vents. And then when you look at the back shell very similar back shell. This one's pretty beat. 
the back shell I haven't noticed any major differences between them again the rear hole has the, the little ridge inside of here like a little I don't know it's an extra flat area must be for aerodynamics but they're very much the same rear shell now you go from this version of the Cooper to this version of the Cooper and one of the first things you notice is that you've got the smaller logo versus the bigger logo you've got the SK2000 down here on the forehead um, but it's up here with the triple C logo on the forehead here uh, you still have on the on the front half shell you still have these little edges that on the holes the vent holes on the back of the front and the front of the back um, so that that's the visual evidence difference and then you get into a difference from the first version padding to the second version padding so even in these there's a couple of slight variations I've seen on um, this is the newer version um, but on the shape of this little differences here and there but everybody's familiar with this piece hanging down the front here which then mounts the the retainer to where the cage screws on but on the original version this is what we had there was no drop down the screws didn't attach the front cage screws didn't attach the the padding to the shell at all so personally i think that was probably uh that was probably a good improvement there for uh holding the padding still because really you only had the the sideburn ear areas holding it from shifting around inside well that's about all the changes there that i can think of right off the top of my head so then you get down to the, now at this time you had um i believe it was the 2001 was the like junior version uh so that was the small so um so this was the sk2000 then you get into cooper changing and deciding to go to sized versions they drop the junior version and go to sized versions of the SK2000 model line, where that 2001 becomes the SK2000 small, which is here. And then the large gets marketed as a medium or a large. The shell was identical between the medium and large, but the padding was different. This is a medium, this is a large. You've got 5 8 inch for a medium and half inch for a large. Um, but the shell itself was the same, just a different uh, logo model number on the top. You also see here that this is the CanStar evolution of it with the CanStar Flying C logo instead of the Cooper Triple C. Uh, we've been to bumper changes now. So we had this style with the nipples, much thicker plastic, a, a much better bumper in my opinion. Then we move into, for some reason, they decide in molding and tooling that they want to go to, uh, probably to accommodate the shell size. They It's a slightly different sized bumper where the notch is. And that notch aligns with the front half of the shell, which means this shell is shorter on the old style than it is on the new style. Uh, probably added some more adjustability. And I think that was probably to accommodate calling a medium by putting thicker foam in. Um, so when they change this to thinner plastic, they then have to mold and tool a spacer because these will snap in half if you re reef down on them too far. But additionally, everybody knows the common issue is these, these screw sets here will just snap right off from the pressure. Very, very thin um spot on the bumper for some reason so those go in there the skeletons go in there and that helps add a spacing and stop this from snapping in half so easily um so that's enough about the bumpers uh then we get into shell differences now 
now we've lost that that uh, little uh, inserted area here in the mold and we've gone to a smaller hole that doesn't have that added section um, other than that they're fairly the same except for of course the graphics are being different the shells a little bit deeper um, and so that's the basic concept of the evolution of that shell but then there's all kinds of anomalies which is why I, I even hesitate to guess at when these are all exactly from and when they started and why they started. Yeah, all of the molds have a stamp on the inside and then the assembly of the unit has a sticker on the inside usually. Sometimes the stickers are gone. But, so here's here's some anomalies. Um, we get into this version here, which I believe is before this one. Um, and the real difference between them is just in the modeling. So it's a different graphic right here. It's a different graphic up here. The Cooper's much thicker than this one. The Flying C is a little bit smaller than this one uh, in height, but it, it may be a little bit longer. And if you notice, it doesn't have an, an L for large, but it's a large. So I haven't figured that out yet. I don't know where that, I, I'm guessing that that's a step between here and here, possibly. So then we have another set of anomalies, which I believe are the later models, because I'm pretty sure this Navy here, um, this is the original graphics. I haven't done anything with this, but clean it up and refoam it. Um, and I put in half inch mini cell foam by, and removed the 5 8 Rebitex, which makes that a large now. Uh, but if you'll notice these two both, so I have a large and a medium here, um, neither one of them have the logo on the top. Both of them are, I believe this is a 95, 1995 mold. And I believe this one's a 1994 mold. So this is gonna be like right at the end of Canstar keeping the Cooper brand alive. Uh, and then we all know if you search goalies, you know, you'll see pictures of Osgood with with a Bauer SK2000, but I don't think Bauer ever marketed that or Canstar ever marketed that with Bauer. And I don't believe Nike ever marketed it with Bauer's name on it. So I think this was just maybe something to do with end of the run, getting ready to phase them out, um, which would make sense again, because if you think of all the stories you heard of, you know, Osgood keeping the SK2000 alive, yet always having a problem finding parts because they had to scour, you know, uh, for sale ads and people they knew and getting pieces shipped from Russia and so on. Uh, so I'm thinking this is the end of the run right here that, that they um, just stopped making them. Okay. So that's my rundown on what I know and understand about the helmet, the SK2000. Uh, I'm sure there's people out there, Brent, I'm talking to you, if you watch these videos. Um, I'm sure there's people out there with a lot of knowledge too. Uh, if you have any corrections or comments or questions even, I guess, I have others in parts right now, not just the couple I showed. Um, I can always take a look or check catalogs try to get clarification. So I uh, hope you found this useful.